Ugh, I don't even know how to start this. I should just leap right in. So, um, the book I am reviewing is called The War of Art. Break through the blocks and win your inner creative battles by Stephen Pressfield. So this is a book about overcoming creative, uh, writer's block, I guess. But it's also ostensibly about, um, motivation in general. It says on the back and early in the book that it should be applicable even if what you wish to do is start dieting or exercising today, but fuck no. This is all about creating art of some kind. This particular author is an author. Books, screenplays he mentions at some point. Oh god. Okay, I've got to describe this better. This is so important to me. I really wanted to talk about this on the first day I read it, and I'm having so much trouble articulating exactly what was setting me off, even though I put in a bunch, a bunch of bookmarks. I just lost an important bookmark because it made me so angry. The whole first portion of the book is describing the enemy, which he calls resistance. Resistance, which is the enemy of art and creating. like. The block, I guess. Basically, that is everything that might distract you from your inner calling ever. The sections are things like this. Resistance and trouble. We get ourselves into trouble because it's a cheap way to get attention. Trouble is a faux form of fame. Resistance is procrastination. Two parts. Resistance and sex. It goes without saying that this principle applies to drugs, shopping, masturbation, TV, gossip, alcohol, and the consumption of all products containing fat, sugar, salt, or chocolate. Resistance and the choice of mate. There's also a couple of things about how once you get motivated, people are gonna hate you for being motivated and stop being your friends. Oh, uh, where's the one that I hated desperately? So, what I gather from this book is that Stephen Pressfield is one of those mind-over-matter guys who believes that literally everything that is fucking up your life is generated by yourself in your head. He claims that if we were not defeated by resistance, prisons would stand empty, the alcohol and tobacco industries would collapse, so would junk food and cosmetic and surgery and infotainment businesses and pharmaceutical companies. He really seems to believe that all physical illness and addiction is caused by people giving up. He also insinuates later that Maybe cancerous tumors happen because we're not living up to our potential? No! No, they don't! That's actually in the last section, which is another kettle of fish, and we'll get there. So all of this is freaking weird, and is it helpful at all? It's, it's a way too wieldy a definition to be useful. Being motivated is not going to cure your addiction. Being motivated isn't going to make you stop liking salty foods. And you can still... Be an artist while having cancer. You can be an artist while being an addict. You can be an artist while you're half distracted by new parenthood. Not all of these things are causes. Some of them are effects. Some of them are causes and effects of each other. And what's the point of this part of the book anyway? Yeah, we have reasons and rationalizations for not working on things. They're not going to be the same for everybody. Like going through a list of does this count for you might be helpful, but that doesn't seem to be what he's trying to accomplish. He makes it a mono-monster. It reminds me of people who believe that every negative thing in their lives is the influence of the devil and or demons whispering things in their ear. Like, I did a really selfish thing because a demon got through to me. Which is literally a thing that people do believe, and I'm not trying to make fun of them, but it troubles me deeply because I only seem to hear about this when, like, exorcisms go bad. Because people are blaming demons for the fact that they are people. And this becomes weirdly literal in the book, where he goes on a weird diatribe against fundamentalism, in general, Christian and otherwise. He references 9-11, talking about how, oh god, where is it? Fundamentalism and art are mutually exclusive. There is no such thing as fundamentalist art. This does not mean that the fundamentalist is not creative. Rather, his creativity is inverted. He creates destruction. Uh, skipping ahead a bit. But the fundamentalist reserves his greatest creativity for the fashioning of Satan, the image of his foe, in opposition to which he defines and gives meaning to his own life. So it's not just me. He he's name-checking the demon thing too, right? I mean, he's attributing to people he disagrees with, but... But even if it's a completely completely useless concept, 
that means nothing if the actual advice on what to do about it is kind of solid. I am almost annoyed that he has a really good point right off the bat. I self-identify as an amateur, and he does not like amateurs, which hurts a little bit. But he makes an interesting and strong point. When you do something for a job, for money, it changes the stakes of that project. Because if you are, say, writing for money instead of as a hobby, you're probably going to take on jobs that pay money that you are less invested in, and you are going to put in work hour style time to work on those things. So you're going to be putting a lot of time to practice and get better at your craft while working on something with much lower emotional stakes than your hobby project, which is probably very important to you and therefore very intimidating and leaves you paralyzed. I'm going to be mulling this one over. He goes on a bit about being patient and organized, accepts no excuses, some stuff about cleaning your workspace and not showing off and not being in it for the fame. Everything else is pretty boilerplate, honestly. If you've read any other self-help book for writer's block or creative anything, you've probably got most of these. Here's the thing. There's a book three. Beyond Resistance. The Higher Realm. Ha! <laughs> you thought I was confused and upset by the first part. So, this guy starts talking about muses. I noticed that the author referenced his religion before, so I'm not surprised that he's religious. And it doesn't surprise me that any kind of author would be interested in, you know, keeping a spiritual dimension in his work. He said earlier you can consider it talent programmed into our genes or whatever, but no, he's, he's really, he's talking about supernatural elements. So I am an atheist, and I don't mind other people having religion, but I don't like them projecting religion on me, and I get uncomfortable when they project religion on others. But even if they are religious, that doesn't necessarily mean they are the same kind of religious that this author is, or that they believe their work was divinely inspired in some way. But here's where he really pisses me off. He makes a distinction between his own self-defined ego and self, where ego is the part of you that wants to go on living, and the self is the artistic part that wants to create. He goes on to explicitly say that the ego of yourself is all about survival and is atheistic, but the self part of you is the artistic part that believes in God. So there are no atheist artists ever, anywhere in the world. I don't like it when people tell me what I believe. No one likes that. I don't like it when people tell me I don't exist, either. Apparently I can't be an artist unless I'm religious. Stephen Pressfield seems to ascribe to a kind of Christian-based, broad-strokes religiousness that he thinks he can get away with just saying, maybe it's muses, and that's gonna apply to everybody. But it doesn't. It's entirely possible to be an atheist, to be an artist, to believe that there is worth in art and in doing art, even if there is no divine element to it. If you want a book that's going to give you practical advice on how to get the writer's block, uh, I read a book called Art and Fear, which helped me a little bit. Um, I would just listen to the Writing Excuses podcast, because even if you're not working on a project in particular, it's fucking fascinating. Well, honestly, I'm in the middle of six-year writer block right now. I don't have any very good pieces of advice, despite all of the things I've read. So if you're suffering from writer's block, I mean, I guess you could read one page of this and, and get a really good piece of advice. But, I don't know, everything else you can get elsewhere without the religious overtones if you don't want them. Or the weird fundamentalist bashing and the references to Hitler and some of the weird racism that I don't think I quoted properly because he decided that everything before the Greeks was like pre-civilization and therefore didn't count. I'm not sure if that's ethnocentrism because a lot of like European Middle Ages stuff like fell in love with Greek stuff and appropriated all of it or if it's like 
time centrism where you believe that everything from a, before a certain time was of course stupid because people couldn't be smart as smart back then as they are now, right? Despite the fact that they built fucking pyramids, no, aliens must have done that because people back then couldn't possibly have like known things that we don't know now about construction. Fucking hell. That's one of my pet peeves, by the way. You can probably tell. I'm making noise, I apologize. I kind of didn't prepare for this setup very well. So what should be next? The one about luxury goods or the one about learning to lead?